There's no doubt that the New Age movement, as Sue said, does control and run our world today, but I'd like to make a few points on that because it may not be in the way that some people think. I don't agree with this idea that there are 13 men in some room somewhere running the entire world and making all the decisions that affect the world. The world is too big and complex a place for that kind of thing to be happening. So once again, I don't think it's a core, core conspiracy like that with just a few men running the whole world by any stretch of the imagination. But if you think about the economic powers that exist, the power blocks in the private world today that can make decisions of millions and billions and trillions of dollars. They can bankrupt a, comp a country. They can decide we're going to take all the money out of the investment pool of this country and move it to this country and just leave the country behind with no investment money whatsoever. Canada worries about that all the time, that if our interest rates change, the international investments are going to be withdrawn, and it is a very few people who control that kind of economic clout in our world today. So there is a degree of control exercised by a minority in this world, but I don't think it's a tight little conspiracy of one group. The world, as I say, is too big and too complex for that. Well, you know, when you start talking to people about world government, uh, many people say, no, world government, that's absolutely impossible, that'll never happen. What they're picturing is the world government that we often have seen in the movies, with a tank on every street corner and that kind of thing, a very totalitarian world, men with machine guns everywhere. In reality, though, the world government under the Antichrist is going to be quite the opposite of that. This is People are going to love it. People are going to think this is the greatest thing since sliced That's bread. Fair. We love yeah. the Antichrist. We love what he's done. We love the unity of the world. We love how happy a place this is. This is all very good. Everyone's going to be rah, rah, rah. They're not going to be subdued by tanks and whips and guns and that so kind of thing. So more or less we could say that this is an open conspiracy That's because right. while there may be an elect few who are moving us in that direction, no one minds. Everyone thinks this is the greatest thing. And one of the things that I think we'll talk about more in this video, I think in Sue's upcoming report now, is the role that the media plays in getting us all to love this idea, the propaganda machine, is up and running full speed. In all of this, a dramatic development has taken place in the last few years. A development so significant that it may be the most important component in the rise to power of New Age ideas in our society. Simply stated, the mass media has taken up the cause of spreading the New Age gospel. Suddenly, ideas, values, and outright propaganda can be immediately disseminated around the entire globe. A so-called grassroots movement can now be spread in a matter of hours instead of years. So powerful is this new technology that Ted Turner has boldly proclaimed that he brought down the Berlin Wall. But with such powerful influence comes terrible danger for abuse and distortion of reality. Take Ted Turner's Portrait of the Soviet Union, for example. This special claimed to show his life behind the scenes in the former Soviet Empire. When it aired, the distortion was so great that even the Soviets themselves asked, what country is this? Turner responded in a way that should alert even the most trusting. He said, when you paint a picture, you can paint whatever you want. I didn't say that it was a true picture. But political areas are not the only areas where the views of the new globalists are being pushed forth. We have mentioned Shirley MacLaine a number of times in this special, since she really has become the voice of the religious end of the New Age. In her book, It's All in the Plain, she reveals how her previous book, Out on a Limb, was made into a primetime television miniseries. It's a long quote, but quite revealing. ABC Television approached me to consider making a miniseries film of my book, Out on a Limb. They spoke of metaphysical search being popular now, and extraterrestrialists and UFOs as something the public was genuinely interested in. Brandon Stuttered, the head of entertainment at ABC, was well aware of the growing spiritual hunger in the American culture and wanted to be the one who had the courage to okay the nourishment. All I ask, Brandon went on, is that you make sure the audience understands cosmic justice and what we are each responsible for in our own reality. That's what the viewers will want to respond to. There are more people into this stuff than you think, and I want ABC to be first. And make no mistake about it, CNN and ABC are not alone. Even the liberal New York Times has carried articles 
commenting on this new trend of applying Madison Avenue expertise to affect the population through mass media. And former NBC chairman Grant Taker proclaimed, If we can start changing attitudes in this country, we can start changing behavior. You know, I don't think there's any doubt that the most overlooked piece of the prophetic puzzle for the last days is the role of the mass media. I think as I read the writings of men of God who've looked at the Word of God and tried to understand what the days would be like years and years ago, what they all fail to see is the role of a central media that could share information, values, beliefs, and cultures throughout the entire world in a split second like we can have in the world today. Well, look at how the media shapes us today. Think about how everything we see on TV, that's what we want. The things we see people saying on TV, suddenly we talk like that. We see people behaving in a certain way on our favorite TV shows, that's how we want to behave. We see our favorite actors selling a particular uh, garment or a particular product, and we're thinking, I want to get that. If my favorite uh, media personality likes it, I should like it too. Think about that power when it gets applied to big ideas and to philosophies, and that power is being applied, as we've pointed out, by the media to try and shape society and to try and shape culture and shape the way we think. Let me give you a perfect example of that. These new age ideas are coming through loud and clear through our mass media today. We just quoted about ABC television and Shirley MacLaine's out on a limb. If you want to see how these new age ideas are coming through, take a look at the Saturday morning cartoons is the first place to go and take a look. If you think it's bad in prime time, Watch three hours of what the kids watch. They're getting introduced to Hinduism and Eastern mysticism uh, on their television every Saturday. Now take a look on the mass media of how Christians are portrayed. Yeah, that's the in big every one. instance, we are portrayed in an extremely negative light on television, with very few exceptions, and that defines the cultures and the beliefs of this world today. So on the religious front, through this mass media culture, you have tremendous confusion. Some things that seem somebody can say they're a Christian and have different values, or somebody can have different values and really be a Christian uh, through what they're saying. I just say that to say, as confusing as that was, there's a great deal of confusion in our world today of where the lines of right and wrong and left and right are. They're blurred through the mass media today. Hey.